everyone, my name's Phil. I'm from Infinity Innovations Technical Team. Uh, and we're just gonna go through a quick overview of the Hanshu 3.0 app as kind of like a, a guide. Um, what we can see when we first log in, when you have an inverter and battery set up, is a house. Now this house will show you all the energy and where it's coming from um, and how your system is performing but it will also show your environment. Now, just to give you a pointer, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my fingers on the screen to show you what I'm looking at. So this is your house here, uh, and on this section here is showing you how much energy is being taken from the grid into your property, okay? Now, at the top section, we have PV, which is your solar, and how much that is generating and going into your load. The home is your actual consumption. So this is the electric that you are currently using in your house uh, from the, either the grid or from the inverter. On the right hand side, you have your cloud symbol, which gives you your temperature. So that's telling you what, what environment the, uh, the system's currently in and what kind of weather we're looking at. Uh, underneath that, we have the battery, and this is telling us uh, an actual working mode, so it's, it's in an idle state currently, and it's showing us how many watts are either going in or out of the battery and so forth. But it will give you an SOC percentage. Now, under that, you have three symbols. Uh, one is for analysis, one is for events, and the other one is for control. So the analysis is giving you breakdown data of your system, showing you how much uh, generation and things like that that you've generated. And you can go through different statistical information, revenue if you've set that up on your station. Um, so it just gives you the data that customers may want to look at to see how they've been performing. The events is to show you any outstanding events on your system. So this could be anything from uh, communication failure with batteries, it could be grid failure, it could be that the PV is not working correctly. So any events that's basically saying your system is not working right will appear here and it will actually break it down and tell you which device at the top is causing you that error. More importantly, if anything does appear, it will actually tell you how to fix the problem. Now some customers may contact you in the event of an event to say there's uh, something wrong with the batteries. Now, more importantly for this, this would be something like if the batteries are empty and need a charge. They will say, we are empty, we need charging. It's not an event, it's not an error, it's just a notification to say we're flat. If you want us to do anything, you need to give us some power. In the control section, this is where you would actually enter your inverter for all the settings that you want to set. Now, as an end user, they will only have access to certain menus. This would be basic setup, energy setup, and function setup. Everything else, they will not be able to see. You as an installer will have access to some of these settings, but not all of them. Now the only ones you really need to be, be aware of is your basic settings, which will actually show you things like your grid rule, your export limit targets and things like that. Clearing the Wi-Fi, restarting the logger if it's a high voltage system like this is. Um, that's how you would reset this from a distance. Now, if we go into energy setup, this is basically us telling what the inverter is going to be working as. And that's why they call it a working mode. So currently this is set to self-consumption mode. That basically means it's getting all the information coming in and it's working with that information like the energy, whether you've got PV, whether it's coming from the grid, and it works out which one is best to use or if it needs to use all of them. You can set your maximum SOC value to 100%. To be honest, that should always be at 100%, should never really change that. Uh, and the battery discharge minimum percentage is always 5%. You should never go below 5% on these batteries. We can change the working mode, and you've got four different variations. You've got reserve power mode, so that's basically changing the priority from low to being the most important to your battery becoming the most important. So your battery becomes number one, load becomes number two, export becomes number three. Under self-consumption, it's the opposite way around. It would be load number one, battery number two, export number three. User-defined is where you would set your charge times. 
and also your forced discharge times and how you enable that. We'll go that into that in a second. Off-grid is basically telling the system you have no grid connection, you are completely off-grid, it will change systematically everything in the inverter to make sure that you are not connected to a grid in the settings and allow your system to work in an off-grid mode. So let's just go into user defined. Let's just confirm that. Automatically presets um, the, the system for you. Now, as you can see, I've pre-populated a charge time and a discharge time. So what I'm going to do is go into my charge settings. You can see what I've put in there is a maximum power, uh, my start time, my end time. What I haven't done is enabled it, but in order for me to enable it, I've also got to save it. Okay, so now I've sent that to the server, which will then send the signal to the inverter to say that is my new setting. Now what I can do with the discharge setting is do exactly the same thing. I need to enable it, and then I need to save it. Now again, uh, what we're looking at on the screen here is maximum power outage uh, as, a, as a total system. This particular one is actually a 25 kilowatt unit, so I've actually set it to 15. Um, and the discharge time, so I'm forced discharging it back to the grid from between the hours of one o'clock in the afternoon till two o'clock. Now to see that in a working motion, we'll go back to the main page. Now, like I said, it sends it to the server first, then the server's got to send it to the uh, inverter. Now, depending upon the signal strength in the actual vicinity, uh, that can take a number of seconds to actually come through. Let's just refresh and see if that's now working. Just need for it to update itself. Okay, so it looks like it's taking a little bit longer than I thought. Oh, there we go. So it's now discharging back to the grid at a rate of 15.2 kilowatts. So once that has now hit two o'clock, what you'll find is that will actually switch off. But that power is now going back to the grid. You can see where it says the grid as well. It's actually pushing back to the grid 14.3 kilowatts because it's using the other power first in the, con the consumer unit. So what your load is, it discounts that off the true value and then pushes the rest of it out back to the grid. Now, uh, underneath the actual inverter, you've also got a, a series of graphs. You can actually enlarge these graphs so you can turn your phone on the side to have a look at what each one does. Uh, so you can look at the data in a bit clearer, in a bit, uh, a bit bigger picture rather than just looking at the, the screen. And you can also push button on the actual house on the devices that you've currently got. So on this particular station, this is our training room, we have, an in, we have two inverters, we have a number of batteries, we also have an EV charger. So if I wanted to go into my EV charger, I would simply click on my EV charger and it will tell me if it's available or not. Again, I can just go across to my batteries, to my inverter, and I can go into any one of these devices and change any of the settings that are needed. So let's just have a look at the, uh, the batteries for instance, because we've already looked at some of the settings for the inverter and I'll just show you what you can physically do with these batteries. So again, you have to bear in mind, we have more access than what you'll probably see, but it'll give you a true reflection of what you can physically do. So let's go into the high voltage again, because that's what we were using. This gives you a breakdown, shows you exactly what's going out of the battery. What currents, uh, what SLC value, what your voltage is of the stack. This is what the battery looks like. It's going through the inverter and back to the load and then out to the grid. Again, you can break this down by going into your history, historical data. You can change the days on there. And you've also got your statistics like you do with the inverter. So again, it's very informative. Now, what we can do is go into remote control, which you can see at the bottom of the screen. And it gives us a, a number of settings that we can physically do with the, uh, the, the battery as well. So this sends a signal to the battery and tells us what we've got on there. Again, you probably won't be able to see the charge currents because uh, that's something for us. But what you will be able to see is a force charge. So you can force charge your unit if it's low in SOC. So you can get the battery to tell the inverter to give it charge rather than going into the inverter settings and requesting a charge through the time settings. So you've got two, two ways of doing that really. You can also restart it. So if you um, are struggling with um, 
I don't know, let's, let's just say that you, you have an issue with your battery or it's come up with an event notice saying um, lost communication with the battery. Okay, so what we could do uh, is restart it. Doing that restart, a bit like a laptop, uh, sometimes just rebooting it can actually fix the communication errors or anything you've got on your laptop. Same rule applies, if there is an error, just do a quick restart on it to see if it clears that error for you. Okay, let's come out of the battery and we'll have a look at something else, which is the EV charger. Now the one we have in the training room, obviously we can't have a vehicle in here, so we can't give you a, a full demonstration of how the, the, the charging and whatnot works, but this gives you a, a brief overview uh, of what the uh, settings would look like on your screen. So once you plug it into your car, it does give you a breakdown of all the data. Again, in the blue section, you have a start charging. So if you wanted to plug it into your car and it's not following the pattern that you've set, so let's say for instance you've set it to a, a time charge, you can actually override that and just say start charging as like a quick charge button. Um, I will do more of a, an in-depth video on the EV charging, um, so do look on YouTube and have a look at that as well. So uh, you've also got local settings. <clears throat> local settings is for installers really, for when they're on the site, they can locally connect to the inverter, uh, change any of the settings like the grid rule and stuff like that when they first commission in it, setting it all up for the customer before they hand it over. Um, so let's just go on to local settings to show you a brief description of this. Uh, we'll use the single phase inverter this time. So I'll connect to the single phase. It then populates the data for me and it gives me all the same headings as what you would normally see in the setup function. Now what it does have in here for the installers is a charge and discharge test. So while you're on site, when you're commissioning it for the first time, you can actually say to the inverter, right, okay, I've done everything I need to do now, let's do a quick charge. It sets a charge and then shows you down here the actual uh, information of what's going into the battery or not. So it's live data. If nothing appears and the battery's not actually taking any charge, that would indicate that you've probably got a brake turned off or there may be a loose wire or something like that. So it allows you then to stop it, check your connections, you can restart that at any time. It could also be that the battery is actually full and it can't take charge. So if we then think, okay, well the battery's full, I can't put any charge in it, let's do a discharge test instead. Straight away you can see on the screen it's discharging now at 71.5 amps. So it is discharging, it is working. So this is a quick tool to find out whether or not your system is actually working. Now most batteries do come out around about 50% SOC value, so you should be able to charge it and you should be able to discharge it. But this is a useful tool to find out if you've actually wired it correctly. Coming out of that, you've also got your clear Wi-Fi password. Again, I've done another video on this already, you can see this on YouTube. Shows you how to reset the passwords, uh, sorry, the Wi-Fi on your actual devices. If you change routers or you move home or anything like that, that's how you would do that. And let's just go back and now we've got menu. The menu page is, is again is there for people to have a look at the systems we've currently got. So if you're an end user, it would only load what you have on site. Um, if you are um, an installer, uh, then you can actually go into your full product list. It will break down and give you all your user manuals your quick installation guides, <clears throat> your warranty information for the actual products on every single um, item that we sell in the UK, it will all be there for you. What you also have is your device warranty. And again, all you need to do with this when you're actually applying for the warranty is to just type in the actual station name. So Hanshu Training Center, which is what we've got. I've currently applied for all the warranties in here, so there is no additional products that I will do and it tells you that at the top. But anything that's on there that is available for a warranty it will automatically pull that into the warranty for you. All you need to do is upload a photograph of the serial number of the device in question as proof of uh, or evidence that you've actually got the product on the site. Now when you go into Quick Guide, what this does it will actually walk you through how to create a station, how to add a device, what it looks like when your systems are binding and it takes you through step by step. So if you've forgotten how to do something on your system, this will walk you through it and tell you how to do it. 
And again, if you get stuck with any of this, you can actually contact us and we will go through this with you. So as a brief overview, that is Handshoe 3.0 of how to get around it on your phone. If you do have any questions or queries or you, you, you're not quite sure or you don't quite understand what I've gone through, do reach out, send us an email. Or if I have covered everything and you want to learn more about uh, Handshoe 3.0 and some of the other amazing products that we do, please check out the YouTube channel. Thanks very much and I'll see you again soon.